Hey, welcome into DC On Screen. I'm David C. Robertson. So, uh, today is a weird episode, but I think it's a really fun one. The Flash is coming up, June 16th. You know that. Here's another thing you know. Michael Keaton is returning as Batman in The Flash. Here's a thing you might not know, though. Jason and I never did a review of the Michael Keaton Batman movies for this show. That's surprising, right? Tell us my truth, and even I'm shocked. But you know, that's going to be rectified starting right now. We wanted to do these two movies, Batman and Batman Returns, leading up to The Flash. And as it turned out, so did our friends Matt Carroll and Jay Scotty over on Bingers Assemble. So we thought, why not turn this into a crossover event? That's what we did. So this week, we all traveled back to the magic summer of 1989, the summer of Batmania. When grown-ass men were getting the bat symbol shaved into their head on the nightly news, retail outlets couldn't keep Batman merchandise on the shelves, and a six-year-old me was getting his first taste of the Dark Knight Detective. That sounded gross. Bygones. I hope you guys enjoy it. Yes, that was an Ally McBeal reference. <laughs> we enjoyed it. And by the way, next week, we'll be doing the same thing on Bingers Assemble, but we'll be doing it with Batman Returns. What? Why are you pouting? Don't be mad I brought other kids to the party. Just come have fun with us. Today on Bingers Assemble, we're going to be talking about 1989's Batman in preparation for The Flash. And we even got the DC on screen guys sitting in with us, me and Jay Scotty. We'll be right back after this. Welcome to Bingers Assemble, the podcast where we rewatch movies so you don't have to. My name is Matthew Carroll. I'm Jay Scotty St. Clair. And we have two people on the show that I don't think you guys have appeared on Bingers Assemble before. Maybe Dave, you did one, I think, I feel like years ago. Uh, we did that, uh, that, that, that movie about the guy who's in the time loop. Yeah, you absolutely shouldn't do the, uh, the shot or whatever it's called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I shouldn't. I told you. I told you. <laughs> Was that the Sandberg thing? Yeah, the Sandberg thing. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, Palm Springs. Palm Springs, yeah. Oh, okay. I was like, I don't remember an episode about Looper. <laughs> nope. <laughs> That's what I came to as well. I was like, did we talk about Looper? What, what were we binging Looper? What were we binging Palm Springs for? Come on, guys. A guy in a time loop and you come up with Looper? That's not really a guy <laughs> in a time loop. You said the, it's the, word is, the word is in the title. Yeah, but it goes through, he goes through like one loop total. Like, that's not a guy stuck in a time loop. It was okay. 12 monkeys, right? <laughs> <laughs> David C. Robertson, welcome. Hey, man. Jason Goss, welcome. Hey. I've been excited to have you guys on, especially for this movie, this series of movies. We're going to talk about Batman and Batman Returns in preparation for The Flash. One thing we often do when we start these, like, what's your relationship to these movies? Uh, Jason, you go first. Oh, mine's pretty scattered, honestly. I mean, like... I, I love it. I've seen it intermittently here and there, but it's mostly tucked away in my childhood. Yeah. So it was really nice to revisit it just now. Yeah, absolutely. Me too. I, 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 what, my big thing watching it is I felt like this was the aesthetic of my childhood. Like everything I saw on screen, I was like, this is my toys. And this was the thing that I like thought was cool. And this is like so much of it was my childhood. It was, co- it was crazy to rewatch. Um, what about you, Dave? This is my first Batman anything. Like, this is what got me into Batman. Really? I went to go see it for my sixth birthday. Wow. Yeah, in theaters. And um, it is one of my comfort movies. And it, mm-hmm. wor- it worked out really well that I'm super sick. <laughs> I was like, I want to get to watch Batman. And <laughs> I literally just, like, curled up on the couch and watched this thing with my wife. And it it is... Not perfect as far as the Batman movie is concerned. It is not perfect as far as a movie is concerned, but it is one of my beloveds. Mm. It's like your bat macaroni and cheese. Yeah, yeah, and I've and likewise for the soundtrack. I've just been you know driving around as I had to and listening like blasting really the Prince soundtrack. <laughs> yeah, and uh, is is 
I don't know. The movie means a lot to me in in, in certain ways, but yeah, it is it's the basis for my fandom. Mm, I didn't realize this was the first Batman thing. So you had never seen like the sixty nine stuff at all. No, I'd never seen 66 or anything. Um, wow. But after, because of Batmania, like, I don't know if you guys remember this, but mm-hmm. in that summer, like, Batman, I think, brought in, like, something like 400, $411 million, which in, adjusted for inflation, I think, is, like, something like over a billion dollars. So this thing was gangbusters at the time. Everything was Batman mm-hmm. uh, because of the success of this movie. Fanzines like, were flying everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Like you'd step I, over them in the street. Dude, like I had the Batman cereal and if you send in <laughs> enough UPCs, you got like a comic book, but while supplies lasted. So we sent in the UPCs and, and, and I didn't get the comic because supplies were gone. They had two. <laughs> it was, it was kind of crazy. Um, but because of that, I got into the Adam West stuff because they were rerunning that like every damn where. So that's awesome, man. I just, I like, it's, it's so hard. And I knew you at that point, or maybe did. barely. Um, but it's like, <laughs> it's so funny because I think of Batman as such a core part of your personality. And so to, to know that like, this was the first thing is really interesting. Yeah. Uh, what, what about you, Jay Scotty? What was your, uh, what was your experience with this movie in your life? Yeah. So yeah, Batman 89 actually came out like six months before I was born. So I, uh, <laughs> you don't have that f- theater experience then. <laughs> yeah, but it still had a major influence on just like kind of what Dave was talking about, the Batmania. I feel like that just persisted so far into like the early 90s. And I think like growing up, I watched Batman Returns a little bit more, like the VHS was played a little more often. Uh, but, you know, the extreme influence this movie had on the Batman animated series, mm-hmm. like that's where a lot of my appreciation comes from because that was was my batman for so and for so many people i know but and that's like considered one of the definitive um interpretations of batman Mm -hmm. i definitely said the animated series is my favorite sure yeah 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 it's it's i mean it's the one i feel like i've lived the most with sure i had kind of forgotten and i and i remember this i remember seeing when the batman the animated series came on that they used the same music from the movie right and i had forgotten that and when I said, and I, and I knew them both as like, if you'd asked me what the Batman, the movie soundtrack sounded like, and you asked me what the, I would have sang the same song. But like when I was watching the intro to this movie, I was like sitting there and feeling like I was starting an episode of the animated series. I was sure. like, oh, right. <laughs> and, and so much of the aesthetic and even that, that, you know, cigar chump and cop, I was like, that's not Bullock, but like, they, clearly there was some like notes like taken. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but like it's <laughs> Bullock. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, Bullock originates from what like the 70s in the comics so like oh, okay. they, they clearly grabbed something of bullock to to make eckhart i feel like or mm-hmm. maybe totally. they didn't even think about it at all but they made right, an right, unsalvageable right. bullock yeah least. yeah yeah exactly like <laughs> the, like an actually crooked bullock like fully yeah. crooked bullock mm. um that was just neat um okay so what we do first on the show, uh, I guess, well, now we've been talking 10 minutes, but let's do what we do. What we normally do first is uh, we do the shot, which is one of us tries to take uh, the entire movie and condense it down to a 60-second t- description. Dave has elected to take the shot. Are you ready, Dave? Uh, no, but I'll try. You can do it, my friend. You can do it. And 60 seconds on the clock and go. All right. So uh, Batman is young. The legend is young. And everyone's freaking out about him. The cops are saying... It's not a real thing. Jack Napier, uh, <laughs> in an altercation with Batman, gets thrown into a vat of acid and uh, begins his reign of terror on Gotham as the Joker. And Vicky Vale's there, too. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that it? Is That's that it. I, got, I, I don't right. know. I don't All right. know. I can't All right. operate with this pressure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I love it. Well, uh, it, well, Jason Goss has elected to take the chaser. Uh, he, he, you've got plenty of things to, to, to catch up on there. Uh, yeah. Jason, 30 seconds on the clock. God, there's more pressure than I thought there'd be after that. <laughs> right? <laughs> well, Dave, you did leave 30 seconds on the table. You had lots I of... I did. <laughs> and I kind of feel like I did it on purpose. <laughs> yeah, I do too. <laughs> All right. Take that, Jason. 30 seconds on the clock for your chaser and go. All right. Uh, so uh, Bruce Wayne learns uh, who made him mm. and in the <laughs> process <laughs> finds that he made someone else. That's also uh, kind of terrible in their own way. 
in the meantime, they accidentally take down most of the crime in Gotham. <laughs> uh, and part of the process, Bruce Wayne falls in love and uh, much to Alfred's uh, <laughs> admiration, I guess. And uh, what, what else we got? Um, That's time. Lots of fake money. <laughs> lots of fake money. All right. I like it. Did, did Bruce really fall in love or was it just Alfred trying to like convince him he had? Oh, Alfred <laughs> shipped the fuck out of these two. <laughs> oh, yeah. Alfred cajoled these two into, into a relationship. He's like, I don't like this Batman. We have to get him redirected. That, that was all an effort like after he outed him accidentally on the stairs. Oh, he, it wasn't accidental. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Where he accidentally plays like the worst wingman ever. Oh, we're not going anywhere. Oh, crap. All right. Oh, I'm one. <laughs> he never had that look of realization. He knew what he was doing. I think it happened <laughs> off screen. Later, he was like, I was not. I was not a good friend. <laughs> Alfred's the worst wingman and kind of the best. <laughs> yeah. Because mm-hmm. you have that party scene where he's like actively like picking up everything behind Bruce. Like Bruce sticks the pin in the I bush and scene. then like leaves mm-hmm. the yes. glass. And yeah, Alfred's actively like picking up his, his mess right behind him. But this was one instance where he was like, no, you clean up your own mess here. You lied to her and I like her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I think, I think that was his way of, of cleaning up Bruce's mess. Like uh, okay. I think, I think that was like that scene of him running around behind him at, after at the party was basically just like everything Alfred does in this movie. Mm-hmm. Everything. It's a beautiful way of establishing that relationship. I just figured he was picking up all of his DNA so no one could figure out it was Batman. <laughs> <laughs> it's I mean, good. I love it's like the good. animated series. They're like, oh, he loses his DNA all over town. Not like that. <laughs> <laughs> but also like that. Yeah. Also kind of like that. But also like that, I just and we're clearly we're transitioning to open bar now, where we just discuss the movie. Um, I I just think this movie has so much going for it, and like any one of these elements would make a great Batman movie. I love Keaton's performance. Uh, Jack Nicholson's performance is just god tier amazing. Like it's just so he's making such big choices and they're all so good and weird. And like, I just love what they're doing with him. Um, I love the aesthetic that Tim Burton puts on Gotham city. And then I feel like none of it would hang together. Like it does if it weren't for Prince and somehow Prince like <laughs> yeah. ties it in a bow of like wonderful 80s synth pop. And it's just so good. It's so weird. And so good. I like, I watch this movie now and I'm like, I can't believe this exists. Who made these choices? They're so disparate and weird. And like, they all come together so well. And I just think this movie is amazing. I love this movie. Yeah, who would ever guess, you know, you you think, eh, that Batman movie was really good, but Prince was the glue. Yeah, <laughs> really. Like, even even as that was the first thing I ever saw, looking back on it, I go, how the hell did they even do that? <laughs> <laughs> and you have Joker's, like, personal Spotify that's walking around with him the entire time with the boombox. Yes. Mm-hmm. Love that guy. I also really dig that he just gives himself intro music to rooms via this dude. Yeah, for sure. That the 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 museum scene is one of my favorites. Mm-hmm. Uh, him just going, what does he say? Let's get some culture, gentlemen, or something no, like no. that. Gentlemen, let's broaden our minds. That's it. That's it, <laughs> Lawrence. <laughs> <laughs> I love the big ball headed dude. His name Lawrence. Yeah, oh, yeah, with that's, the that's horseshoe good. mustache. Yeah. Yeah, the big Fu Manchu. <laughs> it's one of those things that he probably has a gangster name. Like, they probably call him, like, you know, Loose Lips Larry or something. But, like, that's not what the Joker would call him. Lawrence? <laughs> <laughs> Did anyone else keep thinking, like, this is a misuse? Because, like, smaller guys probably could have carried that for you. He should probably be fighting. <laughs> <laughs> Need to put a weapon in that dude's hand. Do you see the size of that boombox? That job was important, Jason. That you don't was give very important. That's there the were most 18 important job. D batteries in that thing. It probably, <laughs> 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 took a lot to shoulder it. And he clearly had two different tapes mm-hmm. for the runtime or something. Well, you know, he had to play Party Man, but then like he turned that one off, and then when he sat down with Vicky, he hit a different button, and right. the other tape started playing. Oh, it was like, oh yeah, nice music. That's right. There's like classical music playing from it or something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's so good. 
one of my favorite, like, actually, I guess, serious, I guess, exposition scenes almost was like when uh, the the Joker attacks the steps and like the gunfire goes off everywhere and everyone is dodging the bullets and dropping down. And it's one of my favorite, like, character moments for Bruce Wayne because he just, like, he gets the, and, 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 uh, Vicky Vale calls it out later. She says, it's the same, the look on his face as a kid is the same look on the face as on the steps of the uh, courthouse. And he mm-hmm. just like mindlessly goes back. He like drops, like his, his jaw is open. His eyes are wide. He's just a child seeing another gunman gun down people. And he just like wanders towards it. Like he doesn't even know. He's just mesmerized by it. He's not scared. He's not, um, it's just like his trauma relived. And I, I thought mm-hmm. that was such a really cool choice. He's not being clever Batman. He's just wandering mindlessly into the like gunfire. <laughs> yeah. Complete with a bullet hole. Yeah, the good. Yeah, that was so good. He, a bullet hits his shoulder, and he just like keeps walking forward. It's so cool. Yeah. yeah, and you talked a lot about like Jack Nicholson's choices as the Joker, but I think it is worth mentioning. Like when, even though I was I was not born when this movie came out, like I know the legacy of this movie. Stop and, like, rubbing it in, Jason. Well, no, no, like kind of it's like almost like a pseudo film historian. Just like uh, it's funny to like look back and see what people's reactions were. Like you can find it on YouTube, like people like writing in and and going on newscasts to like voice their displeasure at Michael Keaton being cast as Batman. So for him to just come out swinging and and really um, embody that duality that's there with with Batman and Bruce Wayne, he's able to do the playboy, but then he also brings that haunted, like driven um, nature to the character as well. Like I, I honestly between Jack Nicholson and, and Michael Keaton, I think those are like the real, real things that keep me coming back to this movie is both of their performances. Mm. And sort of, I guess sort of building off of that, what I, one of the things I really love about this portrayal of Batman is that he really isn't the playboy. Like mm. people don't know him. Like yeah. we have several instances in this movie where people are like, ah, she's dating some guy, Wayne. You know, Mm -hmm. and like no one knows what Wayne looks like. Like when Vicky goes to the mansion, she doesn't know who Bruce Wayne is. No, the Wayne file at the newspaper is like four little flippy pages. I don't even know why they have it. (laughs) (laughs) So (laughs) speaking er earlier before the show, I said something about me and Jason being insular bastards. But I think Bruce is. But him too. Yeah. 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 (laughs) You you came by it honestly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know, you're talking about um, him being cast and it being a weird thing for people at the time. I, it reminds me of a lot of conversations me and you've had, Dave, where we talk about how, like, why a movie becomes popular or not, or, like, why people judge more harshly a product, like a new movie. And we've, we've had this discussion about DC and Marvel and how DC has a lot more baggage behind it because there's all these versions of Batman that people love. But at yeah. this point... There's the 1960s stuff. It's been so long, and this is coming out. But the people who are complaining are like the comics fans, and this is coming right on the heels of Dark Knight, the Dark Knight uh, Frank Miller stuff. And so people are like loving that Batman, and they're like, "What, Mr. Mom?" You know all this stuff. But but it's like Mr. Mom was a huge thing, right? (laughs) Exactly. And so, but the, the people that the people that were big fans cared, but the vast majority of the public did not know that Batman, that dark right. Batman. They knew the '60s Batman, so this was way darker for them. This was a step towards the Frank Miller stuff, if anything. And like, mm. it's just, um, it's just, a, it's a great uh, that conversation we've had so many times about people loving properties. It, it ties into this so well because there was no representation, and it was just. It, only the diehard fans cared about that like difference, you know? Yeah. And clearly all of those people who said, if Michael Keaton is Batman, I'm not going to see it. Didn't really add up to much of anything. Exactly. They got around to it. (laughs) They got around to it. (laughs) Well, that first trailer dropped it. I feel like everybody was suddenly on board. Mm. Oh, wait, was that the trailer though? Or it was like no music, just, straight video for a second. Yeah. I think of, yeah, 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 yeah. It was like on entertainment tonight or something. That's the show. I was trying to think of what yeah. like, mm. like bullshit little kind of TMZ kind of show it was, but yeah, that is, you know, it's so funny. We turned this on last night. My niece was watching it with us and the, you know, the dark night music, the, the, the music's playing and it comes, it lands on Batman and she goes, 
I'm Batman. And she's never seen this movie. She's seen <laughs> I'm Batman parodied in a million things, including like the Lego Batman and all this stuff. And, I, and then he says it uh, like a scene later. And I was like, that's the time. That's like why you why that's why you think that's funny 30 years later because he said it there. Yeah. Like all those other things are parodies. That was the one. <laughs> yeah. Right. So weird to so weird to see it from different people's perspective. I mean, some people weren't even born when this movie came out. Some. <laughs> Probably at least four. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and in at that first scene when he grabs the guy and he goes, I want you to tell all your friends about me. Right. I thought <laughs> thinking of the box office, well, he did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. It's just funny, like that idea that like <laughs> Basically, the movie is telling the audience, I want you to tell all, all your friends about me. Yeah, nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, Matt, you were talking about like the influence of uh, Frank Miller's The Dark Knight. And uh, I've, I've seen this movie a few times, but it had been at least like three or four years since I did my last rewatch. And um, I was surprised by some of the like comic uh, references that I picked up on. And one specifically was like having seen James Gunn's the Suicide Squad and that taking place on Corto Maltese, like the whole thing about Vicky having been a photojournalist with like her best work coming out of like Corto Maltese. Like I never picked up on that before and was kind of delighted to, huh. to pick up on it with this, wa- this viewing. Yeah. Oh, that's it really nice. cool. That's really, really cool. Hmm. You know, there was actually supposed to be um, more Frank Miller in the movie. Mm. There was a whole bit where the, originally Vicky Vale was Sean Young. Right. And she got injured tra- training to ride a horse. Mm. And there was going to be a scene like at the beginning of Bruce and Vicky's date, she was they were supposed to be riding horses together. Mm. And he basically tells her sets up this whole bit where he's like, "Oh yeah, the horse doesn't like me or whatever. He throws me off. That's why I've got all these bruises on my back and stuff." Yeah. Okay, mm, Bruce. Okay. okay, Bruce. Yeah. yeah. But then <laughs> later on, like in the when when uh, Joker infiltrates Vicky's apartment, he was originally supposed to kidnap her, and Batman was going to go after her, or Bruce was going to escape to the roof. Then Alfred was going to meet up with him and give him a suit, but he like steals a police horse. And he's in the Batman suit riding the police horse. Oh, nice. The scene was actually supposed to also happen at night. So it was supposed to be like the Frank Miller Dark Knight Returns Batman riding the right on the horse thing. Oh, okay, yeah, That's super cool. Tim Burton doing that that would look absolutely fantastic. But then, but yeah, then the scene have. ends with like they get there's like a big flying Grayson's display, and that's how they get Robin. Like, oh you know, yeah, mm. yeah. There was a whole. Oh, it was weird. It's beautiful. Weird. The like the, the different versions of that scene you can find are just like weird, and I'm glad it's not there. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I think that's the the nice thing about discussing a movie that's been around for so long is there is like all these behind the scenes and all these stories and just this history there because um you know you mentioned Sean Young being injured on horseback like one of the things I learned is that when Tim Burton was courting Jack Nicholson to play the Joker uh Jack Nicholson wanted him to come out and meet him and they were supposed to ride horses and and Tim Burton was like I don't ride horses and Jack Nicholson said well today you do and so he went up there, and I believe it was with uh, Peter Gruber as well, uh, the three of them on horseback, and like Tim Burton just being like, what What did I get myself into here? That makes That's sense. I mean, with Nicholson's performance altogether, uh, it's kind of a, I don't know, not often talked about fact that he's a bit of a deadhead as far as, <laughs> like, Nicholson enjoys a little bit of a trip, so to speak. Mm. So um, hmm. it's it's almost like he unleashed a lot of that on this character. Interesting. And he's got plenty of roles where he, he plays with, uh, you know, various <laughs> neurodivergent anything. But he definitely, like, here just kind of seems to let it off the leash. Yeah, yeah. I, I immediately kind of went to his performances like uh, Johnny Torrance from uh, The Shining. That's my all-time favorite horror movie of all time. So, yeah, you just look back to the sheer psych- psychosis and insanity that he displays there. And he was the perfect choice. And I'm really glad that they were able to, to get him for this film because there's been, you know, at this point we've had a few different, as we've had a few different um, portrayals of Batman, we've had a number of great portrayals from uh, for Joker, but 
I still think Jack Nicholson's really stands out because he was able to embrace this darker and grittier tone that this movie had, but he still had so many of like the wacky elements of Joker. Like, you know, the flower that shot out acid, he uses like the, the hand buzzer. He's got the pair of teeth that like fall out when he gets punched in the face. Like it's, that last one in particular is amazing because how yeah. committed are you to the bit when you're getting your ass beat by Batman, <laughs> <laughs> but you still pull out a prop joke? Well, that's the yeah. thing about him. I, exactly. Well done. Commitment to the bit. I, I never really thought about this uh, until – so the, the scene where he dies, uh, presumably. When I was a kid, I always thought that laugh meant – uh, that they, he'd return. I remember me and Dave talking about it in like church when we were six. Like, you think he'll come back in another, in a future, you know, like the Joker's got to come back, right? Mm. I was always like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I think you were on board when we were six. He cracked right? that pavement. No, but I was like, no, Jack Nicholson, <laughs> Jack Nicholson wanted way too much money. Yeah, sure. Right. Yeah. <laughs> And earned it. When I was a kid, I took that scene to mean that, or like something like that he had, he had somehow accomplished something or whatever. Um, and now I realize he says, he says it in the museum, I make art till someone dies yep. and like him falling to his death. And that la- he kind of got the last laugh. And then when I, when I thought about it that way, that entire scene where he's like setting up this finale on the rooftop, he like d- blocks the entrance with a bell. Like it's all this big stuff he does at the last scene, all these gargoyles and henchmen. And like, it's just the three of them on the rooftop dancing in the moonlight. Have you ever danced with the devil in the pale moonlight? It's like, he's been yeah. leading to this moment, this like mm. beautiful death. And it is this like art form at the end. I still think he's surprised. I don't think it was him that was meant to die. I think it was maybe Batman that was meant to die, but it's, he still wanted it to be this beautiful art piece. But then it's still at the end. It still was. It was just his own death. And like the, always the look on his face when it, that gargoyle catches his foot and he's like, whoop. But then the laugh is just this like, I don't know. It's this indelible, like, I kind of, I kind of still did my thing. And I just love, I love that so much. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. When he's slipping down that ladder, it, it's, it's very clear that was not part of the plan to me. Right. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Also, why would the helicopter guy not just like fly over the roof and let him down easy? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think those guys were too bright. Yeah. He is shite for henchman. Sure. Yeah, for sure. Now, I I really appreciated that like kind of breakdown and analysis you did there, uh, Matt, because I, I never really interpret interpreted it that way. But as you were kind of explaining it, I find my found myself kind of almost going to like um King Kong as well. Like when King Kong mm. falls from the tower and he's there and they have that line like was beauty that killed the beast like the joke that's kind of like the joker's own <laughs> twisted version of that yeah yeah oh and he's the <laughs> guy good. going up yeah. the tower with the lady like oh yeah. that's a great call there yeah. scotty yeah. well played love that well played damn mm. <laughs> thanks man it's <laughs> really good it's really suddenly really good. i'm looking for a co-host uh, what, do you think? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think jason you need a third <laughs> <laughs> somewhere burton's ears perked up and he went somebody got it <laughs> yeah, someone finally saw it. That's great. I feel seen. I've been listening to commentaries and reviews of that movie for as long as the internet's been around. I have never heard anyone make that connection, and that is fantastic. Mm-hmm. It really uh, is. I, I didn't get there by myself, Matt. You, you set me up. I just knocked <laughs> him down. <laughs> no, that's great. That's really great. Yeah, I, I have. I took notes, you know, as, as you do when you watch these movies when you're going to podcast sometimes. Oh, is that what people do? <laughs> I basically just ended up taking notes and like, it's just different lines. The Joker said like, that's yeah. basically like every, almost everything at the very first line. I just like his introduction. Decent people don't live here. <laughs> decent mm-hmm. people shouldn't live here. Like it's right. just such a, they'd be happier someplace else. They'd be happier somewhere else. <laughs> so good. His is one of the most quotable characters oh, in yeah. movie history. Yeah. Like this performance is amazing for that. Wait till they get a load of me. This is mm. the first appearance of that line, right? Like it feels so classic to me. I'm wondering if it's like from an older movie, but it, it, this is that, right? I mean, if if it was in another movie, I don't remember it. Yeah, yeah. not to I mean, my it's, knowledge. Yeah. It's beyond my film history. Yeah, um, I'm glad you're dead. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like that whole scene, the way he plays it, it just all feels so natural coming out of him. Where like he's really having fun with the joke. Like I, I'm yeah. glad you're dead. And then he's laughing at his own joke and repeating it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you're dead. <laughs> yeah. I, I, but even before that, like 
my I think my favorite of the scene is uh, him <laughs> addressing the rest of the mobsters in the room as he's like fanning the smoking corpse with his hat and going, Antoine got a little hot under the collar. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just like laughing his dick off over this thing. And, and they're he's like, you're, you're crazy. And he's like, haven't you ever heard of the healing power of laughter? Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, so good. Yeah. So good. Oh, man. Another, never rub another man's rhubarb. <laughs> I don't, oh, yeah, I'm yeah. not exactly sure what that's supposed to no, mean. No one is supposed to know what that means, I think. <laughs> not, uh, neither, neither am I sure of what I'm of a mind to make some mookie. What the hell is nothing. that? Nothing. <laughs> I got nothing. Yeah. Uh, and well, yet I get it. And yet yeah. somehow. <laughs> yeah, no. There's, there's, there's scenes where he's like completely like literally the subtitles just says gibberish because he's just going I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, doing these weird like vocalizations <laughs> but you still get what he means like he's still pro- he's still projecting something like mayhem is coming like it's just mm. so much so much wonderful yeah. joker in this movie he does, have, he does like moments where he's like a furby who just like lost the thread for a second and went a little bit crazy like little stroke moments almost yes a hundred percent Lots of bad wiring, as Bruce said. <laughs> mm. I I just think he's such a great portrayal of the Joker. Just it's so he's so broken, and then mm. the fact that he's so violent, and the men who follow him are so committed to him. It, you know, it reminds me of all the like explorations of that on Gotham or something, where like they really explored the idea of like everyone wanting mayhem and they want chaos. They're like, you know, and there's in comics too all this like. Um, kind of acolytes of chaos all these people and like mm-hmm. even before he's the joker they say like the boss is never gonna put you in charge he knows you're a crack nut or whatever an a1 nut yeah an a1 you're nut an, yeah, yeah you're an a1 nut boy and grissom knows it yeah a1 nut boy that's it thank you <laughs> we got we got there um it, but then his 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 buddy from behind like puts that gun over his shoulder he's already got these like acolytes of his like insanity even before he ascends to jokerdom um and man, I just, uh, I love, I love it. I love it so much. Mm. And poor Bob. Poor His Bob. number one. Yeah. <laughs> You're my number one guy. Until I get slightly frustrated because <laughs> someone didn't tell me about a toy that no one should have known about. Well, he was real broken up. He said, I'm going to need a moment or two alone, boys. <laughs> After he killed it. <laughs> <laughs> With his own gun, which he placidly hands over. <laughs> which, that's... One of my favorite things about it is is that uh, you know Grissom has that whole scene with Jack where he puts his hands on his shoulders and says, "You were my number one guy," and mm-hmm. then immediately he turns around and betrays Jack because right. Jack screwed him over. So the fact that Jack did the same bit to Bob almost uh, as a satire, mm-hmm. and then it would mm-hmm. turn around and be like, "Nope, now you screwed me over." I'm just going to shoot you because he, he's already learned the lesson. You make sure they're dead because they'll come back for you. Right. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, yeah. That's a good point. Well, it, isn't that uh, you're my number one guy. Wasn't that a line from Grissom earlier in the movie to Jack right. at yeah, some yeah. point? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So yeah, the whole, the whole relationship is this weird parallel. Yeah. Hmm. And when yeah. he has his revenge sequence with Grissom, what does he, what does he say? He's like, I, I, I can't remember the exact line, but he says, I've died before. It was very liberating. Yeah, so, mm. yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I've been dead once before. It was very liberating. You should consider it therapy. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Oh, 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 oh. And then he just so dances dark. around for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so considering the henchman, like, what what would y'all's advice be for for the henchman of a Joker? This Joker. Advice? <laughs> they can't. I mean, you know, I think the only one who was actually really loyal was Bob. The others seemed like they were just there out of fear, probably, I would assume. I don't probably, know, man. But that museum scene, there's a lot of goofy bastards in that scene who seem like very on board. And I think that's my point is like, enjoy it while it lasts. He's going to kill you. Mm. Yeah. That's, you take that's the good, fair. you take the bad, man. Yeah. I, I take just, them both, I, and there you have the facts of life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. there's got to be an insane amount of loyalty and matt you were talking about just like the acolytes of mayhem and like even before like these guys had to be so loyal to him because like a day after he makes this transformation they've already got like jackets with like branding with his face and, and, clothes and everything <laughs> yeah. like that. yeah so they were on they were on board before 
<laughs> yeah. One of these dudes has a mother who's very supportive. <laughs> <laughs> good at good at cross stitch or whatever, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. While we're on the subject of henchmen, I wanted to bring up that sequence where you've got the guy with the two swords and it feels like the scene right out of Indiana Jones for a second. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. as as kind of goofy as that whole sequence is, I do think it's one of the best action sequences in terms of getting to see Batman actually like use his gauntlets and like the use of sparking there. Like that, that was a great action sequence. And I loved how they accentuated every blow with Vicky's flash on her camera. Oh, nice. Mm. I didn't oh, think it, almost, it almost gives it like an anime feel. Right. Okay. Yeah. Cool. It makes sense in universe because she's taking pictures every time there's a blow. Nice. Yeah, it does literally highlight it well to the point of the action. Like I know it's supposed to be like this kind of stilted costume that's basically just a, a rubber suit. But man, when they actually take a moment to show him in action, they bother using very like Kirby esque like real big moments, like real movements. Like when he actually kicks the dude uh, with the swords, it it felt like it hurt. Mm-hmm. It, For sure, I was a little more impressed than I thought I was going to be about that. Because I thought it was going to look kind of silly and stilted, but it doesn't. Like, honestly, Christian Bell's looks a little more stilted than this sometimes. Hmm. I totally oh. agree with that. The, yeah. This movie, Dark Knight Trilogy's action sucks. Yeah, it's <laughs> terrible. Especially when you see those YouTube breakdowns where they show guys who are just, like, falling down that aren't even getting punched and stuff. They're just, like, <laughs> oh, in the background somewhere, like, oh, no. Oh, <laughs> Batman got me. Like, Batman was nowhere near him. <laughs> yeah. It's just like Return of the Jedi when, like, Luke kicks that guy, but it doesn't make contact. And you could just really clearly see it doesn't make contact. <laughs> and the guy falls backwards. It was a force kick. That was the force. <laughs> yeah. The force Someone kick. brought that up on Twitter, and I said it was a force kick. There we go. Yeah. That's good. That's real There's good. There's like two feet of sun between him and, <laughs> and that face. <laughs> yeah. Um, but all the stuff in this, even though it's, a, you know, it's not as, you know, it's not, it's, this isn't John Wick. Or this isn't like the raid or whatever, but like mm-hmm. the, the stuff connects. It feels like it's actually happening, um, mm-hmm. and it's it's well done. It's well done. I like it yeah, a lot. Way more of a story than an action movie as far as that goes. When that guy came out with the swords, I thought exactly the same thing, that Indiana Jones scene. And I just kind of loved, I, I couldn't remember what happened in this scene. It's been so long since I've seen this movie. And mm-hmm. I really thought Batman was just about to like do something similar. Like the rhythm of the scene felt like Batman should just punch him or something. Like, sure. Yeah, because it felt just like an intentional homage to that scene. Right. And then instead he actually starts like combating him with like ninja moves. And it's like, oh, mm-hmm. that's so uh-huh. cool. That's yeah. so, so cool. I yeah. love it. I remember thinking watching that specifically that like, no, it it does feel like he actually did train for a while. Like it Mm -hmm. it felt like a guy who actually knew it was coming at him and knew how to counter. Yeah, Yeah, yeah. for sure. sure. Not just a street brawler or something. Mm -hmm. And I, I do like that about this movie. Like I went through a period of time where I didn't like that about this movie, but where I, now I'm kind of in a, like, no, Batman is supposed to be kind of mysterious. I kind of like the idea that the audience doesn't know what exactly is up with him? You know, mm-hmm. we didn't get like some laborious training sequence. We didn't get the, the, uh, you know, famous or, or popular at the time, Rocky Balboa training montage. montage. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. He's not running around Siberia, hanging meat and beating the shit out of it. Like, <laughs> <he's-> <laughs> not that Prince couldn't have written a better montage song than I have the tiger, but. Oh, oh man, yeah. he could have. Sure, I'd love could. to see a Prince montage song. Yeah. <laughs> see the future, and it will be. <laughs> that's a that's yeah, that's about right. It's been so long since I've seen this movie that I forgot a pretty main character of uh, Alexander Knox. Yeah, <laughs> like I forgot he existed. <laughs> he was in the CW Crisis uh, on Infinite Earths what? crossover. Yeah, what? That's yeah. so fun. One of the first. Uh, earths we see we visit as the skies oh, turn red yeah. is Knox sitting on a park and uh, on a park bench in gotham and the skies turn red <laughs> whoa that's amazing i still haven't seen crisis i need to go check it out that's that's amazing <laughs> and that was earth 89 <laughs> oh of course it was of course it was mm-hmm. oh mm-hmm. That's great. The only other things I have in my notes is like, I liked a little bit of the social commentary of when the beauty products disappear. I love the reporters just getting like uglier every time yeah, they come yeah, on yeah, screen. Yeah. 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 That is it's yeah. such a good joke because it's like, they don't even say anything. It, they don't call it out. They don't hang a lantern on it. It's just like, 
cut to the same reporters without makeup and it's just the artifice has fallen away. It's right. so funny. Yeah. It's such a funny joke. And every time we see that the male newscaster, he's got bigger and bigger zits. Yeah. And darker eyes. Darker yeah, yeah, bags yeah. under mm-hmm. his eyes. He is losing it. Yeah. So, I, <laughs> I, th- I think that's a great example of like this movie does a really good job of doing a lot of showing and not telling, which is, you know, mm-hmm. often touted as like yeah. the preferred way of uh of, you know, exposition if you have to. But um I thought another like kind of great instance of that was uh something i picked up on this rewatch as well that i don't really think i i tuned in to quite as much when uh before jack makes his transformation he's got that scene with with grissom and they're talking about you know going to raid axis chemicals and he wants him to be the guy and he um confers to his uh his lucky deck of cards and it has the hole in there and it, it you know it's a little bit too perfect of a hole in the joker card but then it was like okay this that's why it's his lucky deck of cards it saved his life at one point in time and they never yeah spell that out for you but it's there for you if you want to you know pick mm. up on that and I'd, I'd never picked up on it until this viewing for whatever reason and then guess who uses that trick later bruce yeah. no that uh, was with, with the dinner plate <laughs> yeah, yeah and okay <laughs> i'd kind of forgotten how uh how that scene went down for in, in large part, but like, man, it, you got to give him credit. Even just in civilian uh, guys, uh, it, it, he does a really good job of like predicting where that's about to go, even though it's kind of crazy mm-hmm. and kind of commanding the situation to some extent. Oh yeah. And it hit the corner of that dinner plate too. Like he could have definitely gone a couple inches different. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. I mean, he could have mm-hmm. shot him in the fucking forehead. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I mean, just, as Batman, he could easily be shot in the mouth, in the face. Sure. Yeah. yeah. He's always Every got, time. That's mm. why he's got the symbol for a target. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I love There's that. There's a really good black and white about how he just kind of like gets taken out by some nobody who just wants to do the one thing. And, and it, yeah, that's that's a possibility for Batman at any given time, any any day. Absolutely. Um, well, uh, is there anything else before we move into bottom shelf, top shelf, y'all want to talk about? I guess not. I mean, I could probably talk about the movie for a while. I could too. Um, I could go forever on it. It's it's just such a great one. I think I'm ready. Okay, yeah, do it. Let's yeah. let's hit bottom shelf. Uh, I Hold guess that. go go around the room. Bottom shelf is our least favorite thing about this movie. It could be a character, it can be a scene, it can be anything you want. Um, uh, just a least favorite thing. Okay, this is one of the instances where I kind of have to do an honorable mention for bottom shelf. And that's just the fact that like, I watched this on max. This is one of the first things I've watched on max since it made the transition from HBO to max. And it's 2023. This movie has been out for what? 34 years at this point, almost 34 years to the date at this point. And they still have not updated the credits to include co-creator bill finger. And I just like, I think that's a little bit of a tra- travesty. Like it wouldn't be that difficult to update the credits, mm. but, um, Aside from that, I, I was kind of quiet when you brought up Alex, not Alex Knox, and I think that's um, that's kind of my bottom shelf. It's just the fact that we spend more time with a side character like him. That his, you know, some of his humor feels like it's in a different movie, and and I get that. But the fact that we spend more time with him than we do characters like Harvey Dent or even like Jim Gordon, who uh, he he feels pretty miscast and kind of like severely underutilized for me, and. I know we're talking about yeah. this film here, but they kept the same actor going forward for the next few films. And I, I just feel like that's kind of, um, you know, it, in more recent adaptations, we've really seen that relationship between Batman and Gordon. And it's just like completely absent here. So that's, that's my bottom shelf. Mm. Knox's whole stick seems to be getting in Bell's pants and gets a little boring by the end of the movie a little bit. Yeah. 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 I agree with that. I, I didn't mind him so much, but like, I I thought it was weird because I just legitimately didn't remember him. Like, and I've seen this movie a few times, but it's been a long time. Um, and yeah, I just didn't even remember his whole subplot at all. Um, okay. Anybody Completely else have agree. a anybody else have a good bottom shelf? Dave, you said you mentioned it's not a perfect Batman movie. It's not a perfect movie. What what uh what are what are what's your bottom shelf? Um, well, uh, I think my actual bottom shelf is probably uh, it doesn't. It's never really tracked to me. That you know, Vicky Vale is this award-winning photojournalist who went to like war-torn Cordo Maltese and took pictures of dead people and all this stuff. But every five seconds in the movie, she's shrieking. Hmm. <laughs> That's fair. Like I feel like she should have been a little more, you know, 
hardcore. Like yeah, a little less shrieky and fainty. Mm-hmm. Like, wants to be like, mm-hmm. oh no, she's back in like a you know a, a peace uh, area. Like she's supposed to feel safe, but like it's Gotham. Yeah, she's in Gotham. Like you can't after, be jumpy in Gotham. After five minutes, maybe stop screaming and fainting. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's basically every other corner there. I mean, aside from that, I think my only real bottom shelf moment is just like a continuity error. Oh yeah. What's that? Where where like the Batmobile is racing towards Batman and he pulls up the little microphone and says, stop. And then he mm-hmm. like lowers his arm. And then we see the wide shot. He's got his it's arm up. There. Again. Yeah. yeah. Mm. <laughs> it's really obvious to me. And it always has been. That's and funny. <laughs> like, did did he get scared that like? No, he just quickly raised his arm again just in case it didn't stop. Because like, he was like, no, really stop. stop. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was, well, it was because Vicky Vale was shrieking in his ear. He's like, ah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, <laughs> just jerked a little bit. Yeah. What you, Jason? You got anything for bottom shelf? Uh, for bottom shelf is like I hate to mention it because God, the practical effects in this thing are so nostalgic. Like I love the. Mm. I love the painted bridge in the background and crap, crap like that. Yeah. At the same time, Joker falling is just terrible. It, <laughs> I, I might as well have taken a lump of Play-Doh and shoved it down a tunnel. <laughs> yeah. Oh, to me, not even, not even like Joker falling is like, what's worse than that is like when he's on the ledge at, on the cathedral, every time they show like an overhead shot, his coat is a completely different color <laughs> because of the effects work. Well, yeah. there's also a scene earlier in the movie over the head from a cathedral where they wanted, they clearly wanted Batman to look like a, just a dark visage and yeah. like they would the outline of his cape to move, but it's like claymation. Like it's legitimately done in style. Oh, I, I, yeah, I think it's rotoscoped. I think it's animation. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's very strange in this movie that, that is all, like practical and then you're yeah and then it's just like that one thing is like weird except i, I love know. that yeah i think the yeah, spotlights yeah. in some sequences as well it's the same same thing it's very clearly uh-huh. just a drawn picture of like a, a spotlight on the building but yeah. mm-hmm. nice i mean for our age man ugh, that yeah. a lot of their effects were so nostalgic for me though Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 for sure. I mean, like that's that Tim Burton thing that the rotoscoping and the animation and stuff reminded me of, like the the way it's stilted and the way it's sort of that stop motion reminded me a little bit of Beetlejuice, even you for know, sure. like the yeah. mm-hmm. the way things move. Um, okay, I feel really bad because you guys all came up with three good bottom shelves and I just cannot think of anything. Like, and I, and I just like I like this movie so much and everything I think of, um. The only thing I could think of is that animation scene, but even even yeah, it's all so. I guess I'll go with that. I mean, I already mentioned it, but the, the that that one anime over the top animation animated moment, but uh, even that like it's just it's all so nostalgic for me. Even the stuff that I'm like that's a little cheesy. I think the bat symbol being formed in the moon is a little cheesy, but mm. it's so classic to me yeah. that like it has to yeah. be there. Like it's so perfect. Mm-hmm. Um, they're doing it again in the flash too so <laughs> yeah they have, they, sure i'm sure they have to um they, and they've done it in other movies too right i feel like it's happened in other nah. prop- no i don't think so okay all right um okay well uh okay top shelf favorite thing about batman 1989 okay yeah my top shelf like bottom shelf was difficult for you top shelf was kind of difficult for me so i just kind of have to go vague and sweeping but it's kind of what i I mentioned at the beginning it's just the lasting legacy legacy this film has and kind of how it like don't don't get me wrong i have love for the adam west camp and everything like that but the fact that like for general audiences it kind of made this transition from that camp to taking batman a little more seriously and i you know i think it's fair to say that we might not be here right now like having this conversation Mm. aside from the movie if like comic book movies hadn't like taken a hold a foothold the way they had and, and been taken so seriously and i think this um definitely in conjunction with uh donner superman like paved the way for comic book movies to be as successful as they were so um i'll it'll forever have a place in my heart for for that alone absolutely yep yeah for sure jason you want to go yeah um <laughs> my top shelf was easy like the i mean how actually scary the joker's plot or or you know, scheme was in this. Like, mm. Imagine actually being in Gotham where you don't know what product is actually going to, you know, kill you. You just got to mm. go about your day. So like the combination of the, the plot actually being 
a, like a, a problem if because it's not mustache uh, like twirling. It's it's nothing crazy. It's just kind of real fear. And then uh, you know uh, past that where Batman actually figures out no no it's it has to be the combination was I don't know as far as the plot goes uh, that was one of my favorite parts of this looking back. Yeah, screw those people who are always like, Batman's never been a a detective in the movies. Bruce Wayne was a detective, damn it. No, he detected the (laughs) hell out of this. He detected detected the hell out of this. (laughs) 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 Um, What was you, Dave? Man, I don't know. And I'll I'll look, I I will say this, because I haven't talked about this yet on the show. And uh, honestly, it, it could change any day what my favorite thing about this movie is. Like my real answer is yes. I just love this movie, mm-hmm. um, but I I love the the uh, the theme of thinking about the future because everybody is thinking about the future in this thing. Like that was mm. that's kind of like the whole point is like, um, you know, we when we had you know um, Joker say to um, almost said Zeph from Cochran. Um, <laughs> we, had, we had Jack tell Eckhart, you know, think about the future. Right. And then he tells him again, right before he shoots him, we've got Bruce over here, like wondering, you know, he's telling Vicky in the cave. I don't, sometimes I don't know what to think about all this. Like he's struggling to make sense of who he is and why he is. And, uh, you know, which goes back to that first scene where she's like, which one of these guys is Bruce Wayne? And he's like, uh, I'm not really sure. Like he's unsure of who he is. He's taken aback by her introduction, but he's also like not secure in himself and he doesn't know what he's bringing to Gotham Mm. or if he can bring anything to Gotham, but he's running around like in a bat suit, you know, like we have the mayor who's focused on the past on this 200th anniversary Mm. You know, even though everyone and their mama is telling them, don't do it. But that'll <laughs> right. be the key to the future. It'll yeah. be the key to the future is celebrating the past. Yeah. Oh, man. Speaking of classic movies with the King Kong reference, um, that whole thing you're talking about, I was like, this is Jaws, right? Oh, like, sure. They're all like, we're doing it anyway. We're doing the celebration. But they do finally cancel it. <laughs> yeah. But like, yeah. th- I thought that was really funny. <laughs> the mayor true. that won't won't give up the celebration, even though there's they're all under threat. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So yeah, I I, I really enjoy that. I, I enjoy that. Like Alfred is is obsessed with Bruce's future, but not as Batman. He doesn't want Batman. Mm-hmm. He wants he wants Bruce to like because he, he tells him, you know, he's like, "What's on your mind, Alfred?" And he's like, "I have no desire to spend my few remaining years mourning over the loss of old friends or their sons," which was mm. beautiful. Great. Great line of dialogue, and then he just like pimps off because it's Alfred. Oh yeah, no, like, he drops the mic. <laughs> <laughs> like he's as what I say, like he's like actively like cleaning up Bruce's messes by just like being like, "Oh, we're gonna be here quite a while." You can't, <laughs> you can't listen to that asshole. Mm-mm. It's like, okay, you're not gonna do because he he's, he's like, I can't worry about that right now. He's like, if not now, when? Right. So at the by the end of the movie, he's just like, you know what? He's not going to do this on his own, and he just goes against Vicky and brings her into the cave. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's just like, no, you're addressing this dude. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this lady is special. You need to think about your future. And it and it, there's and a line it, before that where he's like, where Bruce says like she's special, isn't she, or something like that. And I felt like that was like the tacit moment where where Alfred was like, no, I'm just going to do it for him. Yeah, we're just mm-hmm. going to go full wingman here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, he ain't gonna get it done by himself. It's the struggle, even up to the end of the movie. He's like, uh, there's some, there's some line about like, uh, it's right before, I think it's right before the final fight or whatever. And she, she says something like, we're gonna spend some time together. He's like, I'd love to, but I gotta go to work. You know, like, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. like I got my missions yeah. out here. And it sets up the fact that even though this relationship seems like something Alfred wants for him, it's not really he's something he's in a place to like, embrace or like push for or like invest time in and so when the next movie comes around i don't even know if they, they don't mention her in, in the second one do they they do they do okay i just remember her like not really it's not like it's not like he breaks up with her on screen it just sort of like passes away right the relationship right. goes away yeah it's just like they, it's set up that, that this is sort of a doomed relationship that scene feels like it's about to go somewhere entirely different until the line you mentioned 
Yeah. Where he's like, yeah, but I got to go to work. I'm like, oh, I thought mm. they were going to hug for God's sake. Yeah. Something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pinky swear, anything. Reminds me of thing you guys have talked about so much with like the um, the more recent trilogy, the Dark Knight oh. trilogy. Yeah, the yeah. Dark Knight trilogy, um, where like a lot of the a lot of the contention is that like Batman would never give up being Batman for that many years or whatever. Yeah. Like, why is why is he not Batman more? Mm. And like in this, there's that sort of doorway to like the the happy ending could be he just ends up with Vicky Vale and is a peaceful man or something. But no, he's got to go to yeah. work, and I just I think that's great. When he does, when he says that, and I thought about this when I was just watching it, uh, when he is like, you know, I got to go to work. That's his Walter White turning down the position with his buddies moment. Mm, absolutely. But just like the mayor, he's obsessed with the past. He can't go to the future because he's stuck in the past. Mm-hmm. Right? Being Batman. Yeah. God, I love this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's a Batman thing in general. He's always obsessed with everyone else's future and has no time to consider his own. Like, that's why Mask of the Phantasm, for instance, hits so hard when it's like, mm-hmm. what's that line in the graveyard? I, I I never thought I could be happy or something. Yeah. So I wasn't counting on being happy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, his his future has never even occurred to him. He's he's worried about all the little eight-year-olds who might get their parents shot. Yeah. 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 Oh, well, my top shelf is just the Joker. I, I just like I, I can't. I can't. Just, all the way around, yeah. just, yeah. just all, all the way. Um, he, no one's gonna fight you on that. One. <laughs> I love all the other elements I mentioned earlier that I think make this a great movie. But like Jack Nicholson just brings the whole thing home for me in a way that like makes this movie infinitely watchable. Um, yeah. I, I don't know why I haven't watched it more in my lifetime because I just I, well I just I haven't seen it in so many years but watching it now just like oh, it just feels so good every one of his scenes feels oh, yeah. so entertaining um, and and there's a lot of a lot of like weird stuff going on with him like like I feel like they could really flesh him out more and I know it's not happening I know I know but ever since six year old me saw him fall, I always wanted to see him come back. And I wish, I wish in the flash movie, they'd give us one scene where they have to travel through a timeline where the Joker won this movie. And like, we got to see Michael Keaton face off with Jack Nicholson, even if for a second, even if it's just like, he gets to see what Gotham would have been like if he didn't stop the Joker, you know, like, Mm. and there's like King Joker sitting on his throne. I don't know. I just freaking, I would love to see Nicholson, like take one single, like swing at this one, like 30 seconds swing at this role again it's so good i agree yeah it is it is man yeah every scene with jack nicholson is is quotable it's yeah just over and over again but that said though like a lot of, you know so many people say no this movie should have been called joker yeah no but we have one it was great yeah but you know michael keaton has a lot of meat here Oh sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, there's a lot of nuance to to Keaton's performance as Batman. Mm-hmm. And I feel like we get a lot more Batman than people give credit for. Like, even yeah. the, just like little stuff, like when he's in the in the Batmobile with Vicky and she's like getting closer to him, trying to see who he is, and he like shines that light in her eyes and blinds her, and she's like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's just like, uh, uh-uh, click. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's so good. I think Keaton is great. Um, and I think on the script, I think there's lots going on with Batman, in, including in the performance. I think it's great. But just something about Nicholson is just like so scene stealing. It's just hard to. Oh, yeah. No, he's a <sighs> scene chewing, he, yeah, he, captivating piece of shit. Yeah, that's so sure. exactly so what the Joker waited. should be, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. That should be Batman just waiting in the background for his opportunity. Like, all right, when you're done vamping, <laughs> I'm going to kick you. Yeah. Ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, you you perform around me, then I punch you. That's what we do here. (laughs) May we have an addendum to the bottom shelf? Sure. Okay. In the cave with Vicky, when she says, I've loved you since I met you, I always hate that. Sure. Yeah. I've always hated that. That that was weird. (laughs) (laughs) Just feels unrealistic. Yeah. I I do have an addendum top shelf comment from her. Where she rolls over after getting uh, roofied effectively and says, oh, he took the film. That's her first mm-hmm. thought. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah. I have one more thing to take from you. And then, like, yeah. it's really a creepy moment, honestly. Yeah. Like, the yeah. movie. Yeah. <laughs> oh, when I was a kid, I thought that he just had sex with her. <laughs> for sure. Uh, yeah. I feel like she wouldn't reach for the film if that was the case. Mm-hmm. Not first. Yeah. Although, I don't know how dedicated she is as a journalist, but probably. 
All right. <laughs> well, uh, I guess <laughs> on that note, <laughs> I know we're we're getting ready to wrap up here, but like that is you know one of the things with the movie. Like even like when um, Jack comes to to have his revenge on Grissom, and he's like, "You did this over a woman." A woman yeah. like that's insane. Mm-hmm. Like that doesn't ring all that well. I mean, he's not a likable, supposed to be a likable character. But then I was also thinking about um, Bruce's scene where he goes there to tell Vicky that he's Batman. He's like, "Look, you're a nice lady. I like you a lot, but shut up." And he just, he's, it's <laughs> Yo, like, shoves her down. This is like yeah, abusive. Yeah. 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 yeah, that was almost egregious, as egregious as him hanging upside down because he's a bat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's silly. Yeah. People have inversion tables. Yeah, people do have was. inversion tables. So I was I was watching that scene for, as an adult, <laughs> thinking like, I, if I saw someone doing that, I would think, oh, they must have back problems. Like that, that's, yeah. Yeah. I I wouldn't think it was weird at all. But you know, it's Tim Burton, and he did it because he's a bat. Oh, right. 100%. Yeah. 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 <laughs> 100%. Burton, for all his brilliance, is a simple motherfucker sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I can't believe we're getting Keaton returning to this role. And to Beetlejuice, like, this year or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, that's so exciting. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Really, really exciting, guys. All right. Well, thank you for being here. Please, uh, especially, yeah, you tell us, tell us uh, Dave and Jason, tell us about DC On Screen. DC On Screen, uh, we've been doing this show for eight years. Um, we cover the DC multiverse on film and television. We do news, reviews, um have a lot of dick jokes. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know how, to, how to describe our show. It's mm. basically puns and dick, dick jokes. That's, a, that's all it is. All and right. me flubbing w- words. That's you got word. eight years of puns and dick jokes, guys. Go check out DC on screen. For sure. <laughs> um, all DC we are, related. We are super excited about James Gunn running yeah. DC Studios. Yeah, man. I am. I am pretty over the moon with his slate. I'm really looking forward to Superman Legacy. Um, love Guardians Volume Three. So, even the stuff he's not attached to, like the Flash, I love how absolutely supportive he is of that. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. absolutely. Awesome. Which, if this if this movie does the the amount of money they act like it is is, is going to make, I'm sure the Flash will be around in his DCU. Hmm. Yeah, I'm really interested to see how they handle the sort of like transition to the new DC um, yeah. you know that that James Gunn is planning from this and how the flash does that and if it like ties in and how it all works it's going to be an interesting um look at we we've seen the comic books re uh you know reimagine their like sort of crises and stuff but we've never seen it in um in a, in, a, in the movies in these big like yeah tentpole movie things happening and now they're just going to try to do that transition it'll be interesting which you know I, Gunn actually really likes Ezra from what he said and like when Ezra came in, Ezra was one of the two Justice League members who came in for the finale of Peacemaker right mm-hmm. mm. there he said there are like there's so much footage of Ezra just like riffing. And making jokes about Aquaman fucking fish and stuff. Right. So, oh, that's funny. He did enjoy himself. Yeah. He was like, yeah, there was just so much I couldn't include, but oh my God. That's awesome. Genuinely hilarious guy. So, I mean, if you, if you want eight years worth of us seeing the rise and fall of a previous, uh, well, several previous. <laughs> yeah. Of, I guess, show running kind of entities and or companies. Mm-hmm. And how it's going to compare to this one, then uh, we got you. Yeah. So go check it out, guys. DC on screen. And uh, Jay Scotty, where can they find uh, you, you online? Yeah, please check out Animation Deliberation, where the podcast that takes action, animation, and cartoons seriously, but not too seriously. And, uh, you know, with all this talk about The Flash, I think we are planning on doing a rewatch of The Flashpoint Paradox, which is a mm. great DC animated film that looks like it's going to at least be somewhat of an influence on this upcoming The Flash. And then I'd be remiss if I didn't mention, you know, um, Across the Spider-Verse is about to hit theaters, and we're yeah. very excited for that, so probably mm-hmm. going to do a rewatch of Into the Spider-Verse for that as well. When you watch the Flashpoint thing, do you want me to, like, ship you some tissues? or <laughs> Sure, mm-hmm. that'd be helpful. <laughs> so I've watched it several times, and it's always going it's, 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 it's gonna, to it's gonna get you thrown a little bit, man. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. it's, it's a good one. It's a good one. Yeah. Love it. All right, well, 
that's the show, guys. Thank you for joining us. We'll be back in a few days with or week or so with uh, the Batman Returns, and then we're going to be doing Flash when it drops. So, uh, really excited to talk to, talk about these movies with you guys. We'll be back soon. Peace. Live long and prosper. Wrong show. <laughs> Bingers Assemble is a Stranded Panda podcast. For all of our podcasts and other geeky creative projects, go to strandedpanda.com. Ah, see? That was fun, right? You guys had fun? Oh, don't be like that. I saw you laughing. Anyway. <laughs> That's going to do it for this episode of DC On Screen. We'll see you guys later. Until next time, keep some DC on your screen. Another outro! Hey, thanks for listening to DC On Screen. Our theme song is by Jason Goss and Michael Shackelford of Galactic Engineers. The incidental music is by Michael Shackelford and Kevin McLeod. You can rate the show on Spotify or rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. Doing that really helps push our show to new listeners, so your help would be much appreciated. You can also contact the show at DC on Screen on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, or email us at dconscreen at gmail.com. To become a patron and get ad-free episodes and exclusive content, go to patreon.com slash dconscreen. Your reviews and feedback may end up on a future episode of DC on Screen. DC on Screen is a production of maladjusted.tv in association with Stranded Panda. If you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or whatever damn platform you use.